My wife wanted me to build her a coffee table for the living room, but I felt a pair of sawhorses would be much more my style and a lot more useful in the long run. It has a row of dog holes for your plating stops and hold fast to hold your work well. And the whole thing is put together with mortise, tenon, and wedges. I decided to make them out of hard maple so they could take a beating on the job site. I later regretted that decision when I decided to hand cut some joinery. Hard maple is a workout to chisel through. I did most of my layout primarily in chalk. So if I needed to move a board around to maximize the material use, it was easy to rub off the markings and remark it. Once I got everything laid out, I rough cut all the pieces to their approximate sizes and started squaring up the lumber at the joiner and planer. By the way, if you're interested in building a pair of these, I have a set of plans available on my website. If you do build a pair, please tag me on Instagram with the picture. I'd love to see them. Once my material was squared up, I started making the template for the base. I ripped a piece of plywood to the height of my base to create the template to route from. These paper templates will be available in the plans that you can print out. I traced it out with a sharpie and cut it out with the bandsaw. I made sure I left the line so any leftover bandsaw marks could be sanded out. The spindle sander works really well for this. To save material, I nested them on my board and loosely cut them out on the bandsaw. I cut them a little large so I could cut a notch for my push stick so I would have a good square safe place to push against while ripping them to width. I ripped them to their exact width to be sure they would all be the same height, increasing the chance all my joinery would fit together tightly. Then I went back to the bandsaw and cut out the shape, being sure I left just the line. To clean them up and round them to their final shape, I attached my plywood template to the blank by pushing both pieces against the fence of my table saw to be sure both edges were flush against the back. To cut them flush to the template, I used a pattern bit with a bearing on both top and bottom. This way I can always cut with the grain, minimizing any tear out. Once I routed one side of the base, I flipped it over and adjusted the bit height so the bearing would contact the top of the plywood template and route the other side. Instead of trying to get both pieces perfectly aligned, I glued the finished piece to the rough blank. Once it was dry, I headed back to the router table to flush everything up using the same procedure as before. I set the base pieces aside and started cutting the rest of the pieces to length. The upper and lower rail lengths I just measured, marked, and cut to length. But for the legs, I set a stop block up on my miter gauge to work from. This ensured each leg would be exactly the same height so my sawhorses would be the same height and not rock around. And while I was at the saw, I cut the tops to length. Moving on to the joinery, I established the shoulder of the tenons by doing a kerf cut with the table saw, using the fence as a guide. Then I set the bandsaw up at the same depth as the kerf cut to cut away the cheeks of the tenon. Now to build a quick little jig for my router to cut the mortises in the legs for the lower rail tenon to go through. I started out ripping some scrap plywood to about 3 inches wide. This should give me enough solid base to run the router on. I then used the leg to mark the depth of the mortise. I cleaned up the bandsaw marks with my block plane, being careful not to go past my line. Cleaning the end up not only looks better, but it will also help in assembly so I won't have to drive that long tenon all the way through the mortise. It will only get tight where it counts.
Then I put it vertically in my vise and lined up the edge of my plywood strip with the line that I had drawn earlier. I made sure it was square and then built my jig around the tenon, pressing the parts tight against the tenon wall while gluing them in place with CA glue. I flipped the jig over and filled in any gaps that could cause me problems if I stopped paying attention while riding to be sure my bearing was tracking in the mortise. I added some layout lines to the leg and clamped my template down to them. On the back side, I added some stop blocks so each time I put the template to the leg, it will land in the same exact spot every time on every leg. Now with the pattern bit installed in my router, I started routing out for the mortises following the inside of the template. The bit I had on hand was not long enough to cut deep enough all the way through, so once I established the outline of the mortise, I removed the template and used the wall of the mortise to ride the bearing against to go even deeper. That still was not quite deep enough, so I drilled the hole the rest of the way through and switched to a bit that had a bearing on the tip to finish mortising out the hole. So I have the mortise cut out, but the corners of the mortise are the same radius as the router bit, so I squared them up with a mallet and chisel. Now every time I show me squaring up a mortise, there's always someone in the comment section that says, why didn't you just make the tenon round? Well, the tenon is already square, so it would be more difficult to match the radius of the mortise on the tenon unless you have some fancy panta router or something of that nature. And more importantly, this is just my own personal preference, but I think round tenons look dumb. They're just dumb. They're just not right. Now, if you like round tenons, that's good for you, but it's not good for me. I did a little test fit to be sure I was on track. I think it looks pretty good for a square tenon. Moving on to joining the leg to the base. I did the exact same procedure for creating this jig as I did for the previous tenon. This one is just a bit longer and a bit wider. And then I did the same routing operation in the base. I routed out as much as I could from one side, then drilled the hole through and finished routing out from the other side. I used a much longer bit for this operation, so work with caution. The larger and longer the bit, the bigger the chance it will catch. So take your time with these mortises. Just go slow. And then of course I squared up the mortise with a chisel. I'm going to secure these with wedges from the underside, so I cut some slots for the wedges to go in at the bandsaw. To widen them up a little, I just bumped the fence over a bit and made two passes per slot. To help prevent the wedges from splitting the legs, I drilled an oversized hole at the base of each slot. I set the legs aside to build another jig using the same process as before. This jig is to route out a mortise in the lower rail for the horizontal wedges to pass through. I routed the hole about a 16th inch past my layout line so when I drive the wedges in they won't bottom out against it. Then I squared up the corners of the mortise because I don't want to make wedges with rounded edges.
I set the lower rails aside and moved on to the upper rails. The upper rails are going to have a decorative element on the end, so I cut out my template and transferred the shapes to my work pieces. Then I cut it out at the bandsaw and removed any saw marks at the spindle sander. I'm down to my last little bit of joinery. I found the center on both the lower and upper rail and then lined them up as a matching pair. Then I used the shoulder of the tenon from the lower rail to mark the location of the half lap joint on the upper rail. I used the leg to scribe the exact width onto the rail so I'd get a nice tight fit. Then I use my knife to mark the outline around all sides where the joint will be cut. I set my chisel about the width of a saw blade away from my layout line and gave it a whack to create a trough for my saw blade to track in. Then I just use my pole saw to cut down to the layout lines. Then I chiseled out the waist towards my line, but before I went all the way to the line, I flipped the piece over and worked from both sides, preventing a big chunk from blowing out past the line. I did the same layout on the legs for the mating piece. This time I was even more careful to work from both sides when chiseling out the waist. Since the joint is going with the grain, it would be really easy to split off a large chunk past the layout line if you're not careful. One last thing to do before assembly, I wanted to add a decorative cloud lift to the leg. I sketched out a shape on some plywood, then I traced it onto the leg and cut off the bulk of the waist at the bandsaw. Then attach my template to the workpiece and routed out the final shape. I used the same process as before, adjusting the bit, switching back and forth from top and bottom bearing, ensuring I'm always routing with the grain to prevent tear out. Now I'm finally ready to assemble the legs. I added some glue and drove the legs into the base, flipped it over and secured it with some wedges. Anything sticking out, I'll just sand it flush after the glue dries. To make the wedges, I ripped some scrap wood to the same width as the mortise, and then I ripped them to an eighth inch wide. I cut them to the length and sanded the taper on one end. With the combo of glue and wedges, I don't think this is ever going to come apart or even loosen up. I then made some larger wedges for the lower rail. Since these wedges are decorative as well as functional, they needed to be a little bit more precise, so I cut a taper on the bandsaw using a jig. The jig is basically a large piece that was safer to cut on a diagonal, and then I glued a stop block to the face of it so I could make repeatable cuts. <laughs> 
added some glue and tapped the pieces together, then wedged it in place. You don't necessarily have to add glue to this joint. If it ever loosens up, you can just tap the wedges in a little more. But I don't want to ever have to worry about it while I'm out on a job site, so I just glued everything together. While the bases are drying, I moved on to the top. I laid out the dog holes for my hold fast and other bench accessories and drilled them out at the drill press. I have a combination of hold fasts and planing stops. The hold fast I like the best has a 7 8 inch diameter, while the planing stops have a 3 quarter inch diameter. So I did a combination of 7 8 and 3 quarter inch holes in a layout pattern that I thought would work for me for my workflow, so that way I can use both types. Once I had the holes drilled, I glued the upper rail down to the center of the top. After dry it, I transferred the holes from the top all the way through the upper rail so the hold fast could pass through it. Added some glue to the half lap joints and glued the top down. The final finishing touches. I added some feet to prevent the sawhorses from rocking on uneven ground and rounded over the top edge to make it more comfortable to work at. Thank you for watching. Plans are available on my website and if you want to see what I'm working on next for a future video, give me a follow on Instagram. And of course, if you are not already subscribed, please do so and hit the bell to be notified when the next video comes out. And most importantly, Square tenons look way better than round tenons. Just my opinion.